Welcome back to the Diecast Museum, and more specifically, the Hot Wheels room. Uh, this room is just jam filled with Hot Wheels. If you're new to the channel, I review a lot of different things. But first and foremost, I want to wish everyone happy holidays and a Merry Christmas, as it is that time of year for 2021. Today, we are going to finish off the Hot Wheels blue card era. I've been meaning to do this for quite a while, and I know there is quite a few of you vintage enthusiasts of Hot Wheels out there that will enjoy seeing the end of the 1994 segment to this long-running series of mine. And after that, of course, we'll be going year by year all the way through to present day, a video for 95, a video for 96, and so on. So I've got a pretty complete collection of Hot Wheels variations here and lots of notes on any cars that I am missing. And of course, if you guys have any extra notes that I don't mention or any information on these cars, please leave me a comment down below. And I love to gain some new knowledge from anyone that has some experience on this or some insight. And uh, either way, leave me a comment. It's nice to hear from you guys. So without further ado, I'm going to take these Hot Wheels down from the wall and I'm going to put them down here on the review table. Well, I've just removed all of the Hot Wheels from five Plano cases. That is a total of 103 Hot Wheels cars, making up 34 unique castings. 103 variations out of 140 known variations. And so that makes my collection in this segment 74% complete. This segment running from collector number 237 to the final car in the blue card series, number 274. And when we talk about the blue card series, for anyone new to this collection, that is the solid blue card and the faded blue card featuring either a truck, sports car, classic car, or a tractor doing a front wheel burnout on the mostly all blue cards, square cards. In 1995, the artwork on the card backs would change completely, delineating the end of the blue card era. So these cars are quite collectible. Some of the cars in this lot worth upwards of $80 or more. Most of the cars can be obtained for about $3 to $10, although shipping, if you're buying them online, can be a little bit problematic. Let's get right into this collection because there's a lot to review. I'm going to discuss rarity, pricing, and even the cars that I don't have in my collection. I'll let you know what those are in case you are an avid hunter of Blue Card Hot Wheels. And just one final comment I should mention is that the pricing I'm using is mainly for packaged vehicles. As oftentimes when I'm buying these cars, to get them in mint condition, I have to buy them packaged. And as you know, I am a loose collector, so I do open a lot of these. Uh, if you can get these loose in mint condition, you will pay less. Um, but I, it will just be relatively by a percentage less in most cases. So with that being said, this is collector number 237, the Ford Stake Bed Truck. I've got the black wall clear version, clear window version, the tinted window with seven spoke, tinted window with three spoke. Missing is the clear window seven spoke version, as well as a five spoke wheel with tinted windows. All of these trucks should be obtainable for under $5 each. And as we move over to the highway hauler, three known variations on this truck, of which I have one. Uh, there is This one's worth about $5. There is a version with the Hot Wheel logo on the front bumper. And if found in the package, that one is going to be worth quite a bit more, maybe around $30 or $20 to $30. Uh, also, there's a light green version with a completely different colored tampo on the box. Uh, blue replacing the purple and that one worth about ten dollars if you can find it i have not been able to find one easily in a recent search and now to the mercedes-benz unimog four variations of which thankfully i have all four so we've got the white tri-blade or saw blade wheels the black construction tire wheels white center construction tire wheels and the chrome center construction tire wheels the chrome center tire construction wheels worth about $20. Uh, the white version is the most common here, white center at about $5. Black construction tire, if found in the packaging, worth also about $20. And this one is worth about $5. And as we finish collector number 239, noted is that number 240 to 241 was an unreleased collector number. No cars were released. This is pretty common of Hot Wheels blue cards. There's going to be a few numbers where there is no corresponding car. So that brings us to number 243, which is the 93 Camaro. 
And unfortunately, I only have two out of seven variations in this particular casting. Although the casting is released again at collector number 262. So quite confusing for some collectors if you don't have the literature to follow up on. As the paint job is the same, just with different wheels. Uh, there is red versions as well in 262. We'll get to that when we get over there. But first, let's finish off the 242 collector number. Uh, I am missing a blue enamel, so non-metallic, non-sparkly paint job version of this car. And that one would be worth $100 with Ultra Hot Wheels. Uh, also, there's one with the black wall wheels, which is probably worth about $20 to $25. The version you see here that I have is worth about $5 to $10. And I have a five spoke that's also worth about $5 to $10. And the reason why you see two of these is that this version here has a gray, kind of a light gray base, whereas this one has like a silvery gray base. There's actually a bit of a difference there. So I think this car might have actually been a McDonald's promo or maybe from a multi-car set from the same era, but I don't know for sure because there are no other differences that I can see, and I have not found any literature on that. Um, missing also is several different wheel variations of this darker blue metallic, as you can see. Two different blue metallics here. So I'm missing a tri-blade version, a seven-spoke version, and possibly some more. But anyways, those cars are all going to be worth under $10. Problem for me is the shipping for these cars, as most of them are sold by American sellers. Shipping has gotten to the point where it's $20 to $25 for cars. And so that's why the collection is kind of faltering at this point. Back in the day, I used to be able to get cars shipped from the U.S. for $5 to $10. Can you believe it? That brings us to the No Fear race car, number collector, collector number 244. So 243 was skipped. Uh, I have four out of five known variations here. And the rarest of those variations, I'll just move some of these Unimogs out of the way. So they're kind of blocking the view. Rarest version would be one that looks just like this, but without the one on the side. So it would only have the one on the nose. And that's it. And this is the second rarest version. So basically, the less tampos on it, the more it's worth. Then we've got the five dot version with the full tampos, the full no fear racing livery on it. Uh, and then we've got seven spoke and of course black wall. So the no fear race cars are typically worth between three to five dollars each, with the missing nose version, if you can find it, probably worth ten to twenty dollars. Number 245 is called Driven to the Max, although it says Hot Setup on the tampo on the side. There are two versions. One is neon fluorescent orange, then there's this neon fluorescent yellow version. Both worth only about $5 to $10 each. Uh, again, because of shipping costs, I have not found that car recently. That brings us over to Shadow Jet 2. This is actually from my childhood, this particular car. It's... Uh, Aged quite well, I would say, given it was played with. Um, there are six total variations of this car, all to do with the wheels. Well, actually, no, that's not true. There's one, apparently, that has dark chrome plastic and ultra-hot wheels. This, just silver chrome plastic, has ultra-hot wheels. But the problem is, I have never been successful at finding the four other wheel variations that exist, because sellers never identify the wheels. And of course, you can tell by looking at this car, it's nearly impossible to see what kind of wheels are hiding behind the fenders. However, there are three spokes, five spokes, five dots, and seven spoke wheels apparently available for that vehicle. All worth somewhere under $10 if you could find them. Rigger Mortar. Rigger, mo rigger Motor. Let's not forget Rigger Motor. One very cool casting. Quite recognizable and still in use to this day. It features a coffin with a massive engine in front of it, cockpit and eight exhaust pipes, skulls around the radiator, and a bat on the front. Very cool. No variations on this particular paint job and casting. Worth only about 3 to $5, as it was quite common. That brings us to the Splitten Image 2. The Splitten Image. Uh, I've got four out of six variations here. The other variations aren't that hard to find. It's just, again, same reason as before why I don't have them. Uh, so we've got the ultra hot version here with the chrome windows, pretty easy to come by, a pink ultra hot wheels, and the pink window ultra hot pink wheels, so pink on pink, 
And then the pink window with the orange seven spoke wheels. Also note that there are differences in the Hot Wheel logo on the front left fender right there, where this one is white and this one is orange. So that is another variation. These cars are all worth between five and $20. Uh, the harder ones to find would be the uh, pink canopy with the orange seven spoke wheels that we looked at there. I think that's the hardest one to find. And that one would be at the high end of the range. Also, in between that range, there's a chrome window tint version with chrome seven spokes that I'm missing, attainable for around $10 online. That brings us to collector number 249, which is the Fuji Blimp. And that one, if you turn the rear fin, it has a Hot Wheel logo on the other side. This one's worth about $3 to $5. And there's the Fuji Blimp with the fin turned for the Hot Wheel logo. Let's head on over to number 250. That's the Talboat Leo, a nice classic 1930s car, available with white wall wheels, all metal, or seven spoke. Those are the only two variations, and those are worth five to about five dollars each. And Gulch Stepper, four variations known. I have three of them. Got the red, the dark red paint here with the construction tires. There is a version with the tampos reversed on the roof. So where you see yellow, it would be black. And where you see black, it would be yellow. That one's very rare and worth about $50. And then we've got the black version here with the construction tires, as well as the black with the three spokes uh, saw blade wheels. The street rotor is next. This is actually a Suzuki sidekick. And you can see the Suzuki on the grill there in a later release. Same year, of course, it had the Suzuki removed for unknown reasons, probably some sort of copyright infringement. And we've got three wheel variations here, loose, construction tire, well, construction tire and saw blade and an orange center construction tire. This is an international release, most likely Canadian, as it does have English and French on the packaging. But uh, so you're not going to find this one in the United States, most likely quite rare. I don't have pricing on that. And missing is the purple version, purple in the tampo versus pink. That's the most valuable, $25 if you can find one of those maybe. Uh, it could be worth more than that even. The uh, Suzuki grill, worth about $15 to $20. And the rest of these really only worth about $5 to $10, I would say. Now for one of my favorite castings, number 253, the Mercedes 380 SEL. Most common with the ultra hot wheels here. Five spokes, the most uncommon, worth about seven to ten dollars. The rest of these cars really only worth about three to five dollars. We've got the saw blade wheels, chrome seven spoke, and then an international release, gold seven spoke. So again, that's going to be hard for my American friends to find. And uh, that's the whole lineup of cars. So a very complete collection, five out of five. That brings us to the Soul Air CX4. And first one we're looking at has ultra hot wheels that are chrome. That is an international release as well. So again, hard to find if you're in the United States. You can find the same car with gold ultra hot wheels though. Fairly common. Kind of hard to see in this video, but those are gold printed ultra hot wheels. And then we've got the gold BBS basket style wheels with a dark, a darker metallic blue on it. And also seven spoke chrome wheels, same paint job. Those cars are all worth about $5 to $10. Collector number 255 is the BMW 850i. And this is a large collection of very similar looking cars. As you can see, we've got quite a few to look at. So let's go in for the close details. Uh, this is the most common that you're going to find here. Ultra Hot Wheels with the tinted windows, black plastic base. And then you're going to find the gold Ultra Hot Wheels with the clear windows and it has a black Hot Wheels logo on the wind the back windscreen. You can see the tinted version has a red logo. I am missing a tinted window version of this gold ultra hot version car. Those would be the most expensive at about $20. However, I do have this interesting model which I can't find listed anywhere as the gold ultra hot wheels, clear windows and the red logo typically found on tinted windows. So that is a very small but probably rare variation. And over here we've got the 
clear window ultra hot version so very similar to the first one tinted windows versus clear and then the gold three spoke with clear windows black logo and gold bbs wheels clear windows black logo all the rest of these cars worth between three to seven dollars collector number 256 is this very snazzy looking fluorescent pink 80s firebird with neon yellow interior black plastic base smoked tinted windows worth about ten dollars and collector number 257 is the three window 34 this is not the high raker chassis of course this is just the standard chassis and features all small wheel black walls or small black walls on the front and large black walls on the back three spoke is also an option and missing is a seven spoke variation the black wall version is worth about $10 to $15, as is the seven spoke and the three spoke most common at about $5. Blazer 4x4, the only casting in this lot with opening parts. This one features the opening doors and all metal chassis and body. One of the coolest Hot Wheels, really, and uh, there are a lot of variations to note here. I have four out of the six variations known for this Blazer 4x4. As you can see, it was available, same vehicle, both on the faded blue card or the dark blue card. If you are a carded collector, the solid blue card is the more desirable. I should make note of that for all of the cards that you see here, as many of these vehicles were available both on the solid card or the faded card as things changed about at the end of 1994. Uh, we've got an international release again here, probably Canada only, with the orange centered construction tire. This one is quite rare. It has the construction tires, but it has a purple Hot Wheels logo on the front fender up near the headlight, whereas the other versions have a red Hot Wheels logo on the back window. Let's go to the loose version to see that more clearly. Oh, it's turned around. Oh, well. Uh, the most uncommon would be to find the red Hot Wheels logo on the window combined with the purple Hot Wheel logo that would be on the front fender. That one would be worth around $30 to $40 as it is the purple logo version. If you can find one that the seller knows what they've got, probably gonna be worth about 10 to $20. Otherwise, quite hard to find these vehicles just randomly. And uh, let's go on with the rest of them here. We've got the black centered construction tire, worth about $10. Uh, the, another rare one would have pearl blue in the tampo replacing the dark blue. So that's worth again, about probably 25 to $40. I've never seen one. And uh, so that wraps up the Blazer 4x4. We're going to go on to the Lumina Minivan Taxi. And we've got the black wall version, which is most common, and the five spoke. So respectively, five and ten dollars each for those. Twin Mill 2, six out of seven variations I own. Missing. The only one has orange windows instead of these red. It would look just like this one otherwise with ultra hot wheels. That one would be worth probably around 30 to 40 dollars. This one's worth about $10, I think. Uh, they have, most of these cars have a gray plastic base, although one version I'll show you in just a minute has a chrome base, and it's quite expensive. We've got the five spoke with the gray base, five dot chrome wheels with the gray base, five dot uh, white five dots. As you can see, there's a difference between the wheels here. We've got chrome and white, uh, gray base as well. Then we've got the chrome five dot again, but this one, has the oh wrong one this one has the chrome silver base and this is an international release with a gray base black wall most likely canadian probably exceedingly rare and hard to find value on that would be probably fairly high if you could find it i should make note too if i haven't already the blue card cars that are international these don't have a collector number on them and i will make an example of that when we get to the 59 caddy as i do have some card art there to show you uh, actually, I can show you with the Blazer 4x4 too. You see it has no collector number on the bottom of the card, whereas other blue cards have it in like large white numbers. So that's always indicative of a Canadian card, as well as I said before, the French and Canadian uh, printing at the top and on the back of the cardboard. Getting back to the Twin Mill 2. So the Chrome Base 5 dot worth about $25. Uh, the white wheeled five dot worth about ten dollars and the rest of these really worth only about ten dollars each still more than the average car for kind of an ugly car it well depending on what you think it is a fic fictional car um interesting design anyways 
We've got the Cyber Cruiser. I've only got one out of two variations here. This one has the metal unpainted base with the purple chrome plastic driver and engine and spoiler. There is a version that has a black painted base. That one's very rare, probably worth about $30. This one's worth about five. So here we are again at number 262. This is the 93 Camaro again. For this collector number, there are eight variations of which I have four. I've got both of the blue variations that existed, so metallic blue, light metallic blue, and the dark metallic blue, both the same with gold ultra-hot wheels. And it gets tricky when you go to the red cars. For instance, the car on the left has a lighter red enamel versus this darker red enamel. The only obvious difference, of course, being the wheels and the interior. This one has a white interior, and this one has a tan interior. Five-spoke wheels versus ultra-hot. But there are multiple different variations where the interiors are tan in light red, white in dark red, five spokes and ultra hots interchanged as well. And actually looking for these online is very hard to do because you can't tell the difference between the reds. So unless you have an example with you and you're in a store, I don't know how you could easily collect these without the seller being very specific in their advertising. So for that reason, I don't see this collection growing any more beyond the four out of the eight cars I have. And really, none of these cars should be worth more than about five to ten dollars. That brings me over to the Mean Green Passion. This casting, formerly just called the Purple Passion. Uh, mean Green Passion, I think, is the first time we've seen this car when it isn't purple. Or I may, I may have that mistaken. It might be the first time we've seen this car and then it's purple. Uh, I can't quite remember, actually, right off the top of my head. But either way, that one's worth about $10. And now we are on to the Lexus SC400. There are 10 variations that I uh, know of, and I have 9 of those variations. Otherwise, these cars all have the same kind of metallic burgundy paint job. Apparently, there is a version with the red metallic paint job, and that is what I'm missing. I've never seen one, and I have a lot of these cars in my collection. So if that one actually exists, it would be very rare and uh, it would feature the ultra hot wheels just like this, but with a lighter interior according to uh, certain literature. So let's get on with the ones that I do have. We've got ultra hot, three spoke, five spoke, five dot, white five dot, seven spoke, uh, saw blade, and gold seven spoke, that's going to be a Canadian car international, as well as this black wall wheel version. Uh, these two cars are probably going to be the rarest of the bunch, simply because they are the international release cars that weren't available in the United States. Uh, the rest of the cars worth between three and five dollars. Actually, the five dot, white five dot is rare. Just checking my notes here. That one is worth about eight to ten dollars. Uh, otherwise, these cars should be pretty easy to come by. Collector number 265 is the Oldsmobile Aurora. This one has clear windows. Only difference here is the tinted windows. So first one's $15, second one $10. And the most common is the completely different looking police version with the black five spokes. Or sorry, black seven spokes. And that one's worth about $5. This brings us to the 59 Caddy. There are five variations, four of which you'll be able to find easily. The fifth is an international release, as we were mentioning. No collector number. Uh, five spoke with the light purple paint. And here is the uh, commonly found seven spoke with light purple paint. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look at these Cadillacs here. Hopefully this shows up on the film. We've got two seven spokes next to each other. The one on the right has darker purple paint. Uh, the darker purple paint was commonly available with white wall wheels for about $5. Uh, really, the seven spokes probably worth about the same, both versions. And the most commonly found is this blue version with the gold BBS wheels, or basket wheels, sorry. Um, and then, of course, I've got two of the international cars. Somehow I've acquired two and opened one up. The blue version probably worth about $3. Now here's an interesting casting, the Olds 442 W30. I have six out of seven known variations. There's actually a casting change here, two different castings. The first two variations, this black wall version and the seven spoke version, have a rounded rear fender and short hood scoops. They end 
shorter on the hood than this version does. As you can see, the paint doesn't quite reach the end of the hood scoops. That's about how much longer they are than this version. And also on the long hood scoop version, the back fender well is opened up more into a square shape versus the very round shape on these first two variations. These first two variations worth about five to $10. Uh, seven spoke chrome base worth about the same then we've got the gray plastic base version of the same car seven spoke so all the rest of the cars we're looking at here have the new casting kind of we'll call that the new casting and the paint they uh, they did figure out how to bring the paint to the end of the hood scoops in some cases five dot with chrome base and five spoke with gray base most uh, uncommon would be five spoke with chrome base that should be worth about $25 so expensive little cars for the most part but uh, a hard one to collect again unless you have a quite a scrutinizing eyeball especially when buying online that brings us to the GM lean machine of which there are many variations seven to be exact of which I only have the one uh, apparently there is a version with a black window so one that isn't uh, tinted where you can't see the interior Featuring ultra hot wheels, just as this one has ultra hot wheels. Uh, you can barely see them kind of poking out the back. And then the front wheel is just a tiny little kind of idler wheel. There are five other wheel variations. Five spoke, seven spoke, three spoke, tri-blade, five dot. All should be worth around $5. But again, hard to find these online unless the seller identifies them specifically. And in those cases, they usually want a lot more for the car. It really shouldn't be worth that much. They were quite common, and it's not an overly desirable casting, I've noticed. That brings us to number 269, the Oshkosh Cement Mixer. I've got five variations, four opened up here. And one is a bit of a curiosity to me, actually, as it's a casting change. Again, we've got an example of two of the same vehicle completely, two five spokes on the blue and faded blue card and then interestingly this number 69 ferrari was featured on an oshkosh 269 cement mixer packaging with the rare gold five spokes so that is an unusual car and a known variation here it is from number 69 which we've reviewed in a much earlier blue card video uh, getting back to these vehicles here four different wheel variations black wall five spoke seven spoke and saw blade what's interesting to me is that this five spoke whoa just about dropped on the cadillacs if we look closely at its front fenders it's got like a fine diamond plate fender and if you look at the other vehicles that i have here and we did it we did drop it on the cadillacs it was bound to happen the cement mixer did roll in my hand as i'm doing this one-handed and you can see it's got a very textured diamond plate so that is not a listed variation that I know of. I'm not sure, maybe this cement mixer is from a different, uh, maybe like a five pack or a play set. I don't really know. And I haven't found it with the fine print on any package versions I have, although I don't have a lot of them. These cement mixers really aren't worth that much, about three to four dollars each otherwise. Chevy Stalker, most commonly found in this sparkly gold on neon pink. Metal base, neon yellow interior, the gold ultra hot wheels. That one's only worth about $5 as it's so common. Very uncommon is to find it with the red interior, gold ultra hot wheels, and tinted windows. That one can set you back $80 to $100. And if you find the same collector number with the gold paint job, red interior, and gold ultra hot wheels, that one would be worth about $35 to $50. Here we have most likely an international release or a five pack release. I'm not quite sure, as it has seven spoke and looks the same as this one, I imagine it would be quite rare. Collector number 271, the rarest of all cars if found in the blue card. I don't even have a loose one exactly to show you. This one is a dark metallic blue, whereas the original card that should be here for number 271 was only found in this color of blue, this metallic blue. I did just order one, whoop, and that one's gone. I did just order one on eBay as I was making this video. Loose for $40 with shipping. I know that's a lot, but I kind of wanted one for my collection. And I'll never buy the packaged version as that one is worth about, get this, three 
thousand dollars or more so that's a tough one to find authentic as well because often at that price you're going to find some pretty amazing forgeries and uh, the car itself is becoming kind of rare because of that high price tag that brings us to the last two vehicles the tail gunner one of my favorite castings of all time only one variation and that's it right here eight dollars that's number 273 collector number 272 was unreleased and the final car for the blue card series is collect number 274. That is the Super Cannon. Uh, white center black wall and white center five spoke. Black wall is much more common. Five spoke, very hard to find in my opinion. Uh, white black walls are worth about $5. And this one will run you about $10 if you can find it. That wraps up my blue card era of vehicles that we've been looking at for the last several months if not years it feels like 15 episodes in total uh, feel free to look back on them as a reference point and i hope you do if you are collecting these we are moving on into blue card or not blue card we are moving on into the 1995 series next and also i'm going to be doing a series on some of the kind of specialty cars released like park and plate and international release cars promotional cars and all those california customs there's a lot of different cars that were released between 1990 and 1994 in addition to the mainline cars we've seen so they deserve their own video as well in some cases i've already made videos of certain cars like the park and plate cars but it probably could use an update and certainly with a 4k camera if you're after any of these, of course, happy hunting. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. Take care of yourselves.